So I think that the world is now seeing what they can do when we put it together. And I mean, we have a solid, uh, you know, mind, one single mind uh, of what we want to get done that week. So, I mean, like we, we came out and wanted to run the ball and then we all put our head to it and, and we did it. So, I mean, I think we could do that whenever, whenever we all, you know, sit down and really put our mind to it. Obviously, you guys have situations where, you know, the blocking is good and you kind of just have open holes to run through. But you yeah. also have plays where you fight through multiple tackles. That's mm-hmm. one of the touchdowns that you have powering through, guys. Where does that mentality come from this season, just kind of fighting for every, every Man, game? I tell them, like, it's, it's funny because, like, I tell the offensive line, I, uh, you know, they get a lot of slack on runs because it's, if they miss, it's so obvious. You know, we can miss something and something. You might not even notice it. But when they miss, it's so obvious. So I told them, like, sit down. I'm like, man, if y'all miss, it's okay. It's my job to make y'all right. Um, so whenever whenever they do have a, a mishap here and there, I try to be the one to make them right. So even if it's a, you know a gang of three or, or a gang of two, it's not a negative run. So I mean I, I kind of put that on myself to, uh, to to help them in any way possible that I can. When Josh came in and, and everyone was talking about this system with Devonte right and the, the weapons. What does this system do for the running game, and why is it favorable to you now that you've learned it more and more? Man, I tell people all the time, and I feel like uh, any any in any offense, the run game really is it's, it's the heartbeat of the, of the offense. It gets everything else going. I mean, obviously you got weapons. We got a lot of weapons, huh, you know, on the outside, but. Uh, Defense can scheme and, and, you know, drop back into coverage and, and, and take that away. And, and when they do, we got to be able to run it right at them and uh, leave our mark on that so where they bring the safety down. And then, you know, now they're open. And, it's, you know, it's complimentary football. That's what we try to do uh, game in and game out. No, yeah, I think uh, just the group of guys around here, um, seeing the team, um, just being a part of it, especially with Pat, understanding the defense, um, just, just all of it. West Coast, my wife was uh, super excited about that. Um, so, yeah, just all of those things combined. Um, do you feel like you could go out there at, at when called upon now and go, go play like right now? Oh, yeah, no, 100%. I feel like whenever they, they want me to go out there and contribute, um, right now I'm just focusing on earning, uh, earning a role in the team and, and seeing what happens there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. I'll ask you a couple of questions in a bit. If you want to go, uh, habla español? No. Poquito? No. no. Um, you got Mexican American heritage. Both your parents from Mexico? Uh, no. My grandparents were from Spain, um, and so kind of Spanish Spanish background um, heritage, but nothing. It like stopped with my grandparents. It was like grandma and grandpa were like, no, we're not passing it down. Then my dad didn't pass it down. Tucson, a lot of Latinos out there. You feel yep. that uh, it being Latino Heritage Month and being in the NFL and being the part of the representation, we got we don't have a lot of representation. No, 100%. How proud of you are that? No, extremely proud. Um, I know I, I can't dive too much into it, um, but it definitely is, is something I have pride into and, and take with a huge honor being able to represent it. And, of course, the colors that you're wearing now you, has a lot of history with it. Tom Flores, Jim oh, yeah. Plunkett, Leo Aragus. What does it mean to you now being with the Raiders? No, it means a lot. Um, being able to step in to this facility, be a part of that that culture, that foundation before me. Um, you just want to fill those shoes and, and keep it going. Of course, you've been in previous stops in the NFL, but being in a place where everything is red here, the stadium, what does that mean to you? And did it factor into your decision making of coming to Las Vegas? No, 100%. I think it's it's kind of understanding what's what's going on here, the people that I'm comfortable with, um, and being able to step into that and and understanding I'll have a a, a true shot to. Um, Earn a role. Now, obviously, Denzel, he's uh, he didn't practice today. There might be an opening from week one with you and the team. What does that mean to you? No, yeah, I mean, for right now, I'm just focused on getting in here, um, getting to know my teammates, getting to know the playbook, um, coaches, and just like I said, trying to earn a spot. Blake, there's a lot of men who come in here, and it's gonna the adjustment period is gonna be more. But you know Patrick, you're friends with Patrick, you know what he wants. How much does that help get you on the field quicker? No, it helps a lot. Um, it's just that, that comfortability, uh, be able to step in, understand exactly his mindset, what he wants to see out there, um, and quickly kind of pick it up. How did you? How do you think your first practice went? How do you feel? Do you feel like you picked it up pretty quick and all that? No, yeah, I think overall it, it went well, and it was just things to clean up, things to understand, and and just understand what uh, Antonio Pierce wants uh, wants from me out there and, and wants me to do. To step in Kansas City Chief Week, I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. How excited is that Monday Night Football? Oh, 100%. You always, uh, as a competitor, are super excited to play Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. Any of those games are ready to go. Yep. Thank you. 
there anyone you've played that's like him? Nah, he's he's different. I think the only one who can compare is probably just Josh Allen. Right. You know, just Does how they're feet? exactly feet, being able to scramble and run, but more importantly, when they scramble, they're looking to throw the ball downfield right. and make plays, you know, with their arms at the same time. Offensively, they just do a bunch of things that even Josh said, you want to steal from them, and then you say, well, we can't do that. Um, <laughs> Can you talk about that in terms of their versatility offensively? I mean, Kelsey yeah, could be a quarterback. For sure, for sure. And I think, you know, not only, you know, Kelsey, but McKinnon as well. You right. know, they had him at Wildcat quarterback. Um, then they also had um, – uh, 80, yeah, touchdowns. you know, the tight ends, you know, so it's just like they do a good job, and that all starts with Andy Reid, man. He's the best offensive coordinator that I've ever been around and, and played against. I mean, just what he's able to come up with on a week-to-week -week basis and stress out the defense and stress their rules is just its amazing, you know. And we know we're going to have our hands full, not only with, you know, Patrick and their offensive skill players and their offense, but also with Andy Reid as well. Last year's squad, um, I don't know if you know about this, had a bit of a team meeting on the Arrowhead. Mm -hmm. um, and Patrick Mahomes did not forget. <laughs> How much tougher is that knowing that you're playing up, uh, against a team that's, that's still kind of upset about that? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, what happened last year is what happened last year. Um, we're going against a team that has been in the AFC Championship for the last four years. You know, this is, you know, the top team in the AFC, you know, just year, year. Um, they have proved that, you know, they're the team to beat. Um, they've been winning this division for how many years now? So we can't really worry about nothing on the field. I mean, off the field, we got to worry about, you know, being able to play, being able to execute, being able to, you know, match their intensity and play for 60 minutes because this is not going to be something that's going to be won in the first quarter, the second quarter, or even the third quarter. This is going to be a 60-minute game that we're going to play hard and tough and smart um, for 60 minutes. Do you remember many things about the three games against him? Playoffs was, uh, that yeah, playoff game was pretty For uh, sure. I, I remember that, like I said, it took 60 minutes. I mean, the first game I played against him, um, I think we kicked the field, field goal to win the game. The second game, uh, they won. Uh, no, that was a playoff. We, playoff we, you won. know, it went all the way down to overtime. Right. And then the third game, um, they won. Um, and I think that was what uh, something at the end of the game as well too. So, like I said, this is a 60-minute game. You know, this is a, you know, championship-style football team. You know, who have proven it year in and year out. You know, last four years they went to two Super Bowls, four AFC championships. So, you know, this is the team. Um, if you want to compare yourself to, this is the team, is the team for sure. Them not having Tyreek does it make it less difficult, or is it still the same? No, oh, it's still hard. You know, there's been times when Tyreek wasn't out there. Obviously, Tyreek is a dynamic player. Um, one of the most dynamic players in the league. But at the end of the day, man, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, uh, Valdez, you know, Schuster, you know, Hardman, you know, all the running backs that they got, man, this is a team with a lot of good skill players, you know, that can make it happen. And like I said before, Andy Reid is the best offensive coordinator in the game. You know, he's been doing it for 30 years now. So, I mean, he's seen everything. He knows everything. So, you know, we have our hands full, whether Tyreek Hill is there or he's not. You're not surprised because Brady did a lot of this, no matter who was his receivers were. Yeah, for sure, exactly. So it seems like Patrick's doing the yeah, same thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just, you know, he's getting comfortable. He's getting older. He's getting wiser. Um, he knows where he wants to go with the football. He's doing a good job of getting the ball out quick. Even when it's dropped back, he just knows where he wants to go with the ball. And you can tell this is a you know a young quarterback who has continued to grow. continue to grow, you know, grow year and year, game after game. Your head coach says he's on Max Crosby baby watch. Is the rest of the defense also <laughs> on? Oh, oh, without a doubt, you know. Um, <laughs> obviously excited for Max um, and his fiance um, welcoming in a you know baby girl, and you know it can happen at any moment. I'm just hoping, you know, that you know that baby just you know either waits before or after, you know, the game. But either way, you know, um, bringing life into this world is an amazing thing. And as a as a team, hey, we're excited for uh, for that's Max and his fiance. <laughs> How's Baby Watch 2022 going for you between practice, game, and everything? Um, you know, I feel I talked about it a little bit today, like just being able to compartmentalize and you know, whenever you step, whenever whenever I step in the building, you know, I'm focused on my job 100%. Um, so we're already staying ahead of it. I got people, you know, ready to call me whenever that is. So I'm not, you know, stressing about things I can't control. And I, you know, she's gonna be here whenever whenever she's ready. So I'm just I'm just waiting. We've seen Max Crosby pre being a father. How's Max Crosby being a father going to be on the field? Um, 
<laughs> same guy. I'm always, you know, I'm always in. I'm just, I'm just fired up. You know, we got a huge game coming up. Um, great challenge. Um, it's always, you know, a big challenge when you go to Arrowhead. So, um, you know, we got a lot of work to do. You know, between then, but um, so I think, you know, today was a good day. Can you, Duron and uh, McDaniel's both said that the hardest thing about Mahomes is that you know there's four plays that you don't know yet. Like you can prepare and prepare and prepare, and then he'll just do. Is that your toughest challenge as well? You know, your position that you just don't know at any moment what might happen. Yeah, you know, I feel like my approach always with football. Um, and what's taken me, you know, for these last two years, like taking my game to another level has just been uh, reading my keys. You know, it was a, something Marinelli taught me uh, right when he got here. Is seeing a l when you see a little, you see a lot. When you see a lot, you see a little. Um, and for me, is when I see a little, I see a lot. You know, I read my key, and my key is going to tell me what they're doing. You know, if you're looking in the backfield and seeing all the motions and crazy stuff going on, you're going to get lost. You know, you're going to be sitting in the same spot, standing up, not knowing what's going on. So for me, it's just locking in on my keys, getting the film work. Um, and when I'm on the field, just going, not thinking. People can talk about that, but did you have to kind of learn that lesson a little bit the hard way sometimes um, at this level where guys are want you to look one way when actually things are going on the other side of the field maybe? Um, yeah, like it just, it's constant and never ending, you know, repetition. You know, you don't just say it, go into the field, all right, I'm going to read my key. And it's, it's just like, you got to do it over and over and over again a million times to get one rep right. So, um, you know, that's why, Every single day, I'm doing the same routine, no matter if it's recovery, or whether it's on the practice field. You know, today I'm hurting my, sh you know, my shins are banged up. I'm bruised all up, but it's like it doesn't matter. You know, I'm here to get better. I'm focused on making the team better, and uh, you know, that's that's all I try to do every single day. Max, you love the game. So Monday nights, I mean, you you remember being a kid watching them. How cool is it to be playing and to be playing the Chiefs on Monday night? Oh, I'm fired up. You know, every time. I get to step on the field. It's a it's a blessing, um, and the more people that get to watch, you know, I feel like that's that's what I you know love to be in. You know, I want everyone with their eyes on me because you got 17 opportunities a you know a year, and I know the work I put in. I know the work these guys are putting in, um, and you know we just want to go out there as a team and, and put on a great performance. Matt, whether he's aging or not, Russell Wilson is still Russell Wilson. When you come off of a game where everything seems to finally come together. Does it provide a little boost, a little confidence, a little vindication going into a game against Mahomes? Uh, you know, it's two totally different teams. You know, obviously Russell's a great player. He's been a great player for a long time, but that game's gone. Um, you know, we're going to have to play them again. So, uh, you know, it's going to look a lot different the next time. You know, we gotta we got to worry about KC right now. Max, there was a team meeting held on the Arrowhead last year, and Patrick Mahomes hasn't forgot about it. Uh, <laughs> Comments? <laughs> uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> that ain't happening again? No comment. How many, how many push-ups would that be if someone... <laughs> That's just, yeah. Uh, no, I have no answer to that. How much pride does it take being able to do what you guys did defensively against the Broncos with that start in the, four, in the second half, four Street, straight punts forcing them, three straight three and outs, and you guys being the reason why the team was able to stay in the game for that long and being able to win it. Um, you know, it's at, at the end of the day, like it's complimentary football, and that's what we talk, we've been talking about since day one. The first couple games, we had, you know, the offense helped us in a big way, and the defense had lows, and then it was opposite, and like there's back and forth, but we got to play, you know, four quarters of football every time we go out there. It's not, you know, half and half. So uh, I feel like we did a better job last game, but it still was far from where we expect to be. You know, so that's the thing. We're always looking to improve. Um, we're far from where we're going to be, um, but I think we're we're definitely going in the right direction. Josh was joking that uh, he's giving you some advice to pass on to Deontay how to make the baby come faster. I'm sure he's not the only one. I'm sure a lot of people have given you things. What's the craziest thing? And, and on a more serious note, do you have a plan if it is Monday? Like, do, are you do you have a plan in your mind? Have you thought about it? Um. I honestly, I just feel like, you know, the universe works in uh, mysterious ways. And I feel like it's going to work out in our favor. And I'm, you know, it's going to work out the way I want it to work out. I don't know, though. I can't control it. So I'm just, you know, staying positive. But on top of that, 
it has gotten annoying every single day. I walk in, is the baby here? What's the new? I'm just like, oh my god. It's it's almost like I'm, you know, it's like you have a fake baby because you, you feel like you're lying to people. You're like, stop asking me the same damn so question. Like I'll, you'll know when the baby's there. I'm like Josh. You haven't told her to bounce up and down on a football. No, I, but <laughs> I not at all. Yeah. Josh exactly. told that his wife. No, I, I I was just telling Josh about that. I was like, and, and Dave as well. I was eating breakfast and it was the day after the game and. Rachel like can't sleep right now, so she <laughs> she'll be out of bed like 5:30, 6 in the morning, and I'll just be sitting in the bed. I'll be like, you know, I'm used to dogs being next to me, her next to me, and she just she was sitting downstairs on the yoga ball, just like bouncing in the living room, and it's like still dark outside. I'm like, this is not, this needs to stop. So it's throwing me off. So yeah, I'm just honestly, I'm just ready for the baby to be here. That's it. Thanks. 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 Thanks.